to continue our discussion on the evolution of mobile computing over the years, let's review the modern day scene in software deployment Sphere. You can segregate application components into specialized frameworks. Web applications are written in languages like Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, etc. The background workers use Python, Java, Erlang, and so on. Front end uses preprocessors like LESS and SAS. Queuing systems use RabbitMQ, ZeroMQ, and so on, which themselves are written in various languages. Furthermore, the deployment targets have also gotten more sophisticated. Once upon a time, the typical stack was just a simple server with our software bits deployed on top of it. But now, the deployment stacks are much more diverse, distributed, loosely coupled and complex. You can deploy the code into multiple private environments or put it on your private cloud, maybe public or hybrid cloud. These environments run various operating systems or multiple versions of the same operating system. So basically, the software stack is much more complex using different languages and different frameworks which are in a state of constant improvement and revision. And of course, all this code needs to be deployed in a variety of target hardware and virtual environments that we just discussed. The system starts its journey on a development workstation and then goes through staging, QA and production environments. This inevitably gives rise to some compatibility challenges. The web application can only run on a certain flavor and version of Linux and the database can only run on a particular version of another operating system. And this gives rise to the compatibility matrix of Doom which, if you are in the profession of writing and shipping software, you must be well familiar with it in one way or the other. If not, you will get familiar with it in due course of time. We have permutations of all different software components multiplied with all the possible target environments where our code might need to run today or one day. So all of a sudden, we have an exponential amount of complexity to deal with. We need to ensure that every intersection of this matrix somehow works. Tests pass in the same way on every intersection of that matrix. For instance, the tests need to pass in our local dev environment, then in our local integration environment, and then in QA and production environments. And of course, this does not always work as planned. A typical example is when everything is working perfectly okay on our dev workstation with a certain version of Python libraries and certain version of the libc, certain version of the operating system, when the same code is deployed in production environment, it does not work because the Python package or the Ubuntu version did not exactly match the version on our workstation. Such a software-driven world requires solutions that can solve specific problems while reducing capital costs, the time it takes to implement new functionality and deploy new infrastructure quickly. Modular design techniques and container-based solutions are the answer. Let's explore what these are. Let's come back around to the complexity problem in a software development and deployment scenario. Like most problems, when we look for a solution, it is always better to look at other similar problems already solved by people before us. A very apt analogy for the problem can be drawn using the shipping industry. For centuries, humanity has had to ship stuff all over the world. This stuff came in various sizes, shapes, containers, and characteristics. The shipping industry had to figure out how these goods could be handled, what kind of truck could be used to haul them into the shipyard, what kind of cranes could be used to load them into the ship, etc, etc. The process of shipping our goods was tightly coupled with the goods to be shipped. Each provider of goods and the shipper needed to have specialized personnel and equipment to handle and store the goods. 
they needed to maintain all the expertise and infrastructure ready to go. So it made for very brittle, expensive and cumbersome process. Representing this concern in the matrix, we can see that the situation resulted in a similar matrix of compatibility. Possible types of product to be shipped multiplied by the possible mode of transportation or shipping with an ultimate goal of making goods reach their destination safe and intact. Some 50 years ago, someone had a brilliant idea, a container called the intermodal container. The shipping industry standardized the size, the weight, shape, dimensions, doors, locks, mechanisms, and identification features for the containers. I'm pretty sure we have all seen a lot of them in our lifetimes. With these standard containers, we can ship anything to any corner of the world, any size, any shape, you name it. Not only can you ship them conveniently and safely, you can stack them and ship them in a very efficient manner. And all of those different goods can be shipped at the same time. Not only that, the trucks and cranes needed to handle and transport these containers were also standardized. So no special equipment or expertise was required to handle different types of products. Now all of a sudden, we have a separation of concerns. So this separation of concerns brought about efficiency and automation and it ended up changing the world economy because it is so much cheaper and reliable to ship things with containers. So if you are shipping coffee beans, then your only problem is to make sure that coffee beans fit snugly inside a container. You just fill up the container with coffee beans, lock and seal it securely. Then the shipper using a standard equipment will be able to take it from your warehouse, ship it and deliver it to your customer on the other end of the world. You just need to choose a standard shipper who knows how to handle these standardized containers. Therefore, you are not bound to one specialized shipper. Not only that, the future infrastructure providers and shippers can design their equipment based on this agreed upon container and it will be all compatible. No one will need to rejig their system to handle any type of goods. So it is future proof as well. You can focus on building faster and better infrastructure like better roads, faster ships, more efficient trucks, rather than worrying about the compatibility issues. So we basically went from this chaotic way of shipping products to this more organized, efficient, reliable and faster way of shipping products. So much so, this new method of shipping goods changed the world economy forever. Today, most cargo around the world is shipped in standard containers. Containers have brought about an enormous cost savings in shipping and logistics cost. Today, 5,000 ships deliver over 200 million containers per year. We can look around the room and we can quickly count the things which will not be in our rooms, our houses, if they were not shipped from other parts of the world. So the container solution solved the shipping problem and solved it really well. Coming back to our original problem, the goal here is to solve our compatibility matrix by moving away from the physical or virtual hardware. We can learn from the shipping analogy and solution and do the same thing for software as well. So just as we moved slowly away from physical servers to virtual servers, we start moving closer to these tiny little software containers which can contain all our code and can deploy it directly to our target environments in the exact same configuration as it ran in our development workstations. Let's take help of another analogy to understand use of containers on software development and deployment.